It's often said that big things have small, humble beginnings. I'm Jerome Namaset from the Dares Green Hygiene Consortium. The Dowry Screen Hygiene Consortium is responsible for the development of the Dowry Screen Hygiene Village. The village is situated in the Dowry constituency, which has a population of 12,000 people. Most of these people are subsistence farmers. The site for this project is located in the Dowry constituency. Our site has a significant potential for the generation of renewable energy. We're talking about wind capacity factors in excess of 50%, solar capacity factors in excess of 30%, wind speeds in excess of 8 meters per second at 120 meter hub height. As such, the site is perfect for the generation of green hydrogen, green ammonia, and carbon-free agriculture as the project intends. In phase one, our project will be developing and producing 182 tons of green ammonia. This will be based off of one and a half megawatts of renewable energy. In phase four, we will be producing 352,000 tons of green ammonia on the back of one gigawatt's worth of renewable energy and a 420 megawatt electrolyzer. In phase one, we will have a commencement date or inauguration of the site in 2023 March. We will commence and commission the implementation of some of the long lead items, including your electrolyzer and ammonia synthesis unit towards the middle of 2023. And we anticipate the production of Namibia's first batch of green hydrogen, green ammonia and carbon-free agriculture at the end of 2023. Phase one will also be producing 500 tons of tomatoes, green tomatoes as well, imagine that as well as 600 tons of carrots. The Douglas Green Hygiene Village starts and ends with the community. Community involvement is a significant part of this project. As such, the Daure Daman Traditional Authority, which governs the area, is a key partner and stakeholder in the development of this project. This is together with the TSEP Conservancy. Both of these entities are project partners. Maybe with the assistance of this project, have some people who are educated, who will be getting experience from the project. Uh, therefore, it, is, it means a lot for my community. And I uh, would want to see it become a reality. And I will, wherever it is needed, will bring my part to see that my community is uh, part and parcel, not only my community, but the Namibians at, at large. The community involvement also stretches as far as employment. In phase one, we will be in a position to provide employment for 50 to 60 Namibians, as well as 100 Namibians during construction. I am so thankful for the government to send this green hydrogen project to us and it was very important for us because we are living in Dhaka. As I mentioned, in phase four, we will be in a position to provide jobs for up to 1,000 Namibians. It is our intention to ensure that most of these jobs are sourced locally with the assistance of the Daure Daman Traditional Authority. It's also important to note that this project community involvement stretches far beyond just employment in the area. We will also be implementing community garden schemes and providing 14 settlements in the surrounding areas with community boreholes as well as community greenhouses. These greenhouses will provide these communities with the opportunity to create economic activity by the planting of their own fruit and veg. The village also commits to purchasing this agriculture that is produced by the community in the event that the community wishes to sell it. The individuals from the community will also benefit from training at the Daure Green Hydrogen Village. This training will focus on equipping 
members of the community with the skills needed to successfully implement this community garden scheme. The project also features a significant research component. We have the University of Namibia as well as University of Stuttgart as members of the Direct Green Hygiene Consortium and they will be conducting research opportunities and activities on site. This will provide tangible experience for Namibian students and ensure we develop capacity for Namibians within the industry to ensure that the green hygiene industry is thriving and successful with active local participation. I am a 24-year-old Namibian student currently studying at the University of Namibia and I am doing my Masters of Science in Renewable Energy. So right now we're busy working with the raw data and the capacity factors for the wind and the solar so we can figure out the most ideal location on site for a wind farm and a solar plant. Some of the research activities will include uh, diesel engine conversions, tractor conversions, ensuring that these can run on hydrogen and ammonia, research into fuel cell usage to power facilities, as well as research into the direct application of anhydrous ammonia in a green scheme or greenhouse environment. So as I mentioned at the start, all projects or all things that are great have humble beginnings. And that is the same case with respect to the Dares Green Hydrogen Village. Today, Namibia is significantly ravaged by the impact of climate change. But instead of sitting back and becoming a victim, the President encouraged young people of Namibia, such as those that have founded the Dares Project, to go on the front foot, combat climate change using our natural endowments, and of course, at the same time, create jobs and uh, impact our communities positively. We congratulate you, Dares, and we look forward to deploying the other pilot projects in 2023. The BMBF is providing funding worth over 12 million euros, most of which will be used to build the equipment here on the ground. And today marks, is, makes, marks a start. Together we are laying the foundation for the first net zero village in Africa. The main aim of the project is to achieve the sustainable production of green hydrogen using renewable sources of energy. Photovoltaic systems and wind turbines will be placed here to supply that renewable energy. Electrolyzers will be producing some 30 tons of green hydrogen per year. Definitely we are now dealing with very complex challenges. Environmental change, climate change, now energy security. And there is no country that can do it alone. And that's why we have these big protocols and agreements like the Paris Agreement, before that the Kyoto Protocol, and we have sustainable development goals. These alone have ensured that no country will do it alone, but bilaterals, multilaterals to be able to work. Underneath all are institutions like SASCO who have been supported by the BNBF in the last 10 years. Our role is to support our member states, Angola, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, and Zambia through the provision of climate services, human capital development, and now preparing them to take the advantage of the enormous renewable resources and produce green hydrogen. So green hydrogen is simply uh, the breaking down of uh, a water molecule uh, using renewable energy resources, either uh, solar or wind, into a hydrogen or an oxygen molecule. So the hydrogen is then harvested and can be used as a, fuel, as a fuel in its purest form or can be combined with other uh, uh, molecules to form a derivative fuels. But there is a need to have uh, an alternative fuel that is going to uh, uh, replace the fossil fuels. So green hydrogen is the likely fuel that uh, can be used to replace uh, fossil fuels in the sense that it can be used to power up uh, different industries, the mobility industry, the entire transport industry. Uh, it can also be used uh, to power up uh, several chemical industries as well. And most importantly for Africa, it can be used to make uh, ammonium nitrate, which is 
uh, used as a fertilizer. And that is where the uptake for Africa uh, stands the greatest potential. This is why the Namibian and German governments signed the joint communique of intent to develop the Namibia Green Hydrogen Strategy, enhance the capacity of young Namibians through the Youth for Green Hydrogen Scholarships and the pilot projects. Darus Green Hydrogen is one of them. This could not have been possible without the financial support from the BNBA and the political support from the government of Namibia.